Hey folks, my name is Joel Duggan and this is the realm of Vastin, or at least you're looking at it. What we're actually in is Photoshop. And uh, what this is, is a time lapse of an art stream that I did on Twitch a few weeks ago where I started doing the concept art for the frost tree in this season's realm of Vastin. And for those of you that aren't familiar, the realm of Vastin is a co-op multiplayer server and we're all building this giant city. And the big frost tree in the middle is kind of key to the lore uh, centered around the Frost Druids, which is a spin-off of the Arbor Druids that are part of this whole uh, I, world that, that Fixit and, and friends have been creating over the last few years. I really encourage everybody to check out the Realm of Aston on YouTube and the other videos from folks because you're going to get a lot more lore and a lot more idea from there. Uh, but this is kind of this bridge between my two passions uh, so far. I, I've been doing a lot of Minecraft videos, but I'm a professional artist. And so when I was tasked with coming up with an idea for this giant frost tree, I went right back to what I know best, which is painting as opposed to building blocks in Minecraft. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a screenshot and drawing what I feel would be a good idea in terms of placement, scale, and shape for this tree. It's just kind of a, a sketch. You can see that I erase things and I go back into it and I change things over time, make things larger and smaller. It was just meant to be kind of like a concept and uh, in some parts of it I do end up liking close to the end and I keep quite a bit of it. But later on uh, I, uh, I make some changes you know, as I turn it into pixel art and I start planning it uh, and planning on dropping it into the world of Aston. Uh, the pillar that you can see here in the middle of the screen that looks like it's part of the screenshot, that's actually a world build height pillar that Fixit had laid down as like tree goes here, it is this high, but beyond that, we've got no idea what it's going to look like. So that's what I'm trying to figure out here. So right now I'm thinking about uh, making sure that there's enough room at the top of the tree for lots of thick foliage. It's going to be very frosty and blue and uh, snow covered. So I don't want the trunk to go all the way to build height because then we don't have any room for the leaves at the top. So right now I'm just kind of sketching out some branches and uh, kind of coming up with a good shape for the base of the tree. I think sometime soon I end up switching over and starting to paint, paint in some uh, leaves and foliage and that sort of stuff. So the tree itself is going to be pretty dark. It's going to be mostly gray, stony looking, uh, maybe some bark blocks, some gray bark from acacia. And also we're playing around with putting in some of the dead coral blocks that are new in Minecraft 1.13. Uh, just to kind of give it some extra texture. Uh, that actually brings me into a question. I had asked Twitter to send me some art or Minecraft questions for this time lapse. And the first one comes from Crystal Alpaca. How do you plan on making this amazing structure mob proof? I have no idea. We haven't really planned that far ahead. That's the kind of thing I think is going to happen organically in game. Uh, one idea that I have is that because of the height and because of the weather in this particular biome, a lot of this tree is going to be covered in snow which is going to block uh, mob spawns. So uh, if not, we can always add some carpet. Uh, there is some custom carpet textures in the Realm of Aston texture pack, which was created by Jermsey Boy. I believe that a gray carpet is stone. So we might be able to block some uh, some spawns that way. We can also add things like end rods that look like icicles if you hang them the right way. And they could uh, add some light as well as add some kind of cool drippy frost looking stuff uh, to the tree. Uh, and here you can see that I'm, I'm diving in with some uh, blue and some darker blues and purples and I'm going to put in some some rough trees. Something nice about working over a Minecraft screenshot is that Minecraft is a pretty low resolution game. So your concept painting doesn't have to be super detailed. You can just go in there with a square brush and try to figure things out. And right here you can see I'm trying to figure out the scale approximately of one block. So when you look at that little white uh, box there, that's the size of a Minecraft block. So this tree is massive. Uh, it's probably 30 or 40 uh, blocks at the base across, and uh, the trunk is roughly 180 blocks high. Uh, obviously that's gonna twist and turn and, and go different directions, and uh, the foliage is gonna add a lot of height to that as well. But it goes from Y88 to approximately 250, 256. So it's gonna be a pretty big structure. Uh, these roots are nine and 12 blocks around when you get into them, uh, into the world. So they're really thick pieces of, of tree, which it's, uh, it looks really cool. And right now you can see I'm trying to blend the tree a little bit more into the environment, trying to put some snow down, trying to make it look like it's a little bit more part of the landscape. Uh, just trying to cement that. Uh, and you can see 
adding some light and shadow, uh, just trying to make it feel a little bit more part of the lighting that's happening in the background. And uh, this is not really here nor there when it comes to uh, actually planning the build in Minecraft. This is just my own kind of artistic vision, trying to get a feel for what this might look like in world if you had like say shaders on or something like that. So moving on to the next question, it is from ChateauCat85, AKA Cosmic Dancer. Cosmic Dancer is a strong member of the uh, Spawn Chunks community as well as a mod in my Twitch channel. How did you get into all things art and illustration related? Was it something you were always interested in as a child or was it something that came along later in life? I have always been drawing. Uh, I have always been interested in drawing. Uh, as a very young man, I discovered uh, that Disney animators and uh, a local cartoonist by the name of Bruce McKinnon, who is an award-winning political cartoonist here in Canada, uh, did this for a living. They drew for, for money and that was their job. And I thought, hmm, that sounds amazing. So I uh, pursued that my entire life. I got serious into drawing probably around 13, 14. I took art in high school. I have a fine art degree. So I went on to college and did uh, art there, you know, sculpture, painting, photography, all that kind of stuff. And then I went into animation. I took a technical course in animation. I worked in uh, television animation for about six years. Uh, since then, I've been independent. I've been doing my own thing uh, as an independent illustrator. So that is kind of like my brief art history. Uh, but yeah, I've been doing it my whole life. So when it comes to drawing trees and, and uh, coming up with concept art and stuff like that, I'm very comfortable just kind of tossing up, you know, either Photoshop or opening up my sketchbook and, and throwing some ideas down. Uh, something I do quite a bit actually is uh, I have a really cheap pad of graph paper that I picked up from the dollar store. And I use that to plan out a lot of my Minecraft builds, not like in super detail, but just kind of blocking out sizes of things, how tall a roof is going to be, getting the right angles. Cause I can just draw a quick line and, and get the angle that I want kind of with my own drawing skills. And then think about how I want to turn that into one by one meter blocks, you know, in Minecraft. So here in the video, you can see I'm kind of putting a little bit more effort into blending the painting into the earth, into the, the surrounding, uh, I guess, topography. And uh, this doesn't end up making it into the world. This is just kind of like me spitballing while I'm doing this live stream about like how we might you know, incorporate the road. I know in Vastin, we're not uh, bulldozing everything. Like we're trying to build around the existing landscape. We're going to, of course, tweak a little bit, make it look pretty, but we're not going to move a hill so much as we're going to just move around the hill and kind of build the city uh, in different directions. So that's what I'm, I'm getting up to in here. Next question on Twitter is from Magpie Tear, aka Magpie the Muggle. Did you have a specific tree species in the back of your mind when you were working on sketching initially or maybe a bonsai? Uh, you're correct, actually, and you can see it just off in the right-hand corner there. There is a uh, reference image on another piece of uh, Photoshop document that I didn't have kind of on screen the whole stream. Uh, one is of a bristlecone pine from Utah. I actually saw it in person. I was on a hike there a couple years ago. And uh, a couple more images from Google, Ma uh, Google Images Search on bonsai trees. And you can see a little bit of bonsai influence in uh, the way that the branches and the leaves kind of twist around. Uh, but the bark itself, the weathered, older than than life kind of look comes from the bristlecone pine. And the bristlecone pine are incredibly old trees, like 2,000 years old. They look dead, but uh, the core system is quite alive, apparently. Uh, it was a really interesting, uh, you know, thing to read about and, and see for, you know, in, in first person when I was in Utah. Very, very cool looking. They definitely have a mood about them. They, they have a very stoic appearance. And that's something I wanted to try and translate into uh into this frost tree for Vastin. so here i flipped over in the video and i'm looking at the tree from a different angle we're looking directly west in in the Vastin world and this is the main entrance to the now city which is built up quite a bit And I'm just trying to come up with a way to maybe, you know, put that road in, figure out how that might go into the landscape. So what is the look going to be? What is your vision when you first walk into this town? And uh, I'm taking a lot of these branches that I copied and pasted from the other, uh, the other view, kind of twisting them around, moving them a little bit, just to try and get like a, 
a rotation. It's kind of like a, a cheat to try and rotate uh, a flat drawing. Uh, you can see that I've moved that, that branch, that tree branch off to the right quite a bit. Uh, now I'm going back in and putting in some lighting as if the sun is behind it. So I'll get some rim lights going on and really simply just kind of trying to push this back down into the landscape. You can see I'm adding a little bit more into the branch. And so I'm trying to rotate the idea of that tree that we did in the uh, first half of the video and think about what it might look like from this angle and also try to get something really iconic. So I want there to be a very strong silhouette. I want this branch that I'm painting the icicles on to be very important. Uh, I want there to be kind of a path to the eye. So you're going to see the big branches at the bottom first, and then your eye is going to travel up the trunk. And the idea is to try and push yourself, push your vision higher. So we want to have the tree be imposing and large and have people see it from top to bottom, but also kind of control the way that they look at it and say, okay, well, there's a lot of interest in the lower half. And then as it gets taller, it's going to look cool, but it's more about the, the tree as a whole when you're looking at it from the top part, when you're looking at it from the, the top to bottom. Whereas if you're looking at it uh, the bottom third, because that's a lot closer to the, to the player, we want that part to be a lot more interesting and, and fun. Last question is from Fixit412, aka Fixit from the realm of Vastin. And he says, I don't even understand how you can pre-visualize these organic lines. Do you have the total pick in your head? Or does it evolve as you get some parts on paper? I'm gonna lean more on the latter half of that, fix it. As a cartoonist and illustrator with about 20 years experience, uh, you just sort of build up a visual library of things like trees, bushes, benches, tables, chairs, houses, all that kind of stuff. So it's important to have reference, as I mentioned earlier, but you, you, know, you always kind of grab stuff from your head and kind of mishmash it. And sometimes you'll see things that you like and you decide to keep those. I'm sure a lot of people in art have heard the term happy accident, and that's true. Like they actually happen. Once you kind of get a certain sense of, of your sketching ability and, and your confidence in throwing some lines down, every once in a while you just get this happy little accident that you know you can't repeat. So you, you save it. You can you include it in the drawing even though it wasn't part of the plan. And uh, that's what I think I did in a couple of you know situations with the way that the roots are going, uh, some of the twists in the tree. That big split... In, in the trunk where you've got this one big branch off to the right and, and this other trunk that goes up and, and reaches for the sky on the left. That was not planned. That was just something that sort of happened. I thought, well, I'll put a branch out this way and I'll put a branch out that way. And somewhere in that plan, my head just said, oh, well, what if this thing is, is really heavily lopsided? Like it's got one big branch that kind of goes off in one direction. Uh, and I think that direction happens to be north in the world. And as a frost tree reaching north, I thought that kind of made sense. Just stuff like that just kind of happens, you know, on its own. Uh, but other than that, like I said, it's it's a combination of the reference that I gathered, the conversations that you and I had about what the tree is and what it means to the frost druids, and uh, then just kind of letting my artistic kind of juices flow, you know, kind of coming up with stuff. I erased a lot in the early part of the video because there was a lot of things that I didn't like, and you just kind of, eventually you kind of come up with a shape that looks right, that feels right, the composition feels right, and you just kind of go from there. So here at the end of the video, I'm just putting things side by side so you can take a look and see what these two angles of the tree look like. Uh, you can kind of see the rotation that I was going for, uh, getting a strong silhouette, looking at it from the west there. But that's it. That's all the time that I have for today. My name is Joel Duggan. You can find everything that I'm doing on joelduggan.com. You can follow me here on the Realm of Vastin. You can follow all my friends in the Realm of Vastin. Those links are going to be down in the description below. And hey, uh, if you like these art streams, then let me know because I, I think I want to do more of them, but I want to make sure that people are responsive to them as well. Uh, I do put them on Twitch. They're live. You can watch me draw in real time. That's twitch.tv slash joelduggan. And you can tune into the Spawn Chunks, which is a podcast that I do with my friend Pixel Riffs. And we talk about Minecraft every Monday. See you next time.